Amen. Thank you, Lord. Today's message is going to be talking about being in the right place at the right time. And we're coming from Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 3. So if you would turn with me this morning to those particular scriptures, we're going to talk about how to qualify for the potential blessings and provisions of the Lord. I'm going to begin by talking about the prerequisite to obtaining the blessings. And then I'm going to tell you what the blessings are. But we have to qualify for the promises. And how does one qualify for the potential blessings, provisions, or promises? Deuteronomy 28 and 1 reads, And it shall come to pass. I'm going to stop there just for a moment because, and it shall come to pass. First of all, this morning I would want you to settle your heart, settle your mind, settle your spirit on that the promises of God shall come to pass if we meet the criteria. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 declares, for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God. And it shall come to pass. Joshua 21 and 45 declares, There fell not a one good thing which the Lord has spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Matthew 5 and 18 says, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And it shall come to pass. God's not a man that he shall lie. Whatever he has spoken and declared in his word shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass if here is the prerequisite to receiving the promises of God or the provisions of God or the blessings of God. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. He says, hearken. Let's begin there with hearken. If you listen attentively to what he is speaking, if you perceive and comprehend through the means of the ear, if you hearken, if you would hear what the Lord is saying, in the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart in the day that you hear his voice. He says, if thou shalt hearken diligently, and diligently means to be persistent, it means to persevere. It means to give a careful attention to. He says, hearken diligently. Put some effort into what you hear. Make an effort to strive to do what you have heard. He said, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, what is the voice of the Lord thy God? The voice of the Lord thy God is the word of God. What he has declared in his word for every word of God is God breathed, is God inspired, the scriptures are. God breathed the scripture. He inspired me to pen the scripture. That is his voice. And he speaks to us through his voice, which is the word of God. He also speaks to us through the Holy Spirit, through the unction of the Holy Spirit. But if thy shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Look at the word Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The covenant keeping God, Jehovah God, God Almighty, the one that keeps covenant with his people. If thou will hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe. To observe. Observe means to proceed, to watch, to abide in, to adhere to. To observe and to do. To do means to apply the proper application of the word of the truth of God that you have learned, that you have heard. He says, observe to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And so that is the prerequisite 
to receiving the potential blessings, provisions that the Lord has laid up for his people. Amen. They're laid up. You just have to go out there and access them to gain access to them through your obedience. So now we know how the prerequisite for the blessings, we have to hearken. First of all, we know that they will come to pass. What he has spoken will come to pass. But we have to hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do. So what are the blessings that the Lord has provided or laid up or stored up for his people? One of those is provisions. Amen. Verses 3 through 5 talk about the provisions that he has for us, that he has laid up for us. He says, blessed shall I be in the city and blessed shall I be in the field. God says that he will bless you, that he will provide for you. Matthew 6 and 30 declares, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And so what are those things? Let's just take just a moment, just to turn, keep your marker in Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 28 and let's turn to Matthew and take a look at what those things are because the Lord is a provider. Jehovah Jireh, he's our provider, and he desires to give good things to his children. Another prerequisite as you're turning there is that these blessings, these provisions are not for the sinner man, but these provisions are for those that have called upon the name of the Lord, those that are in the family of God, that are children of God, that are sons of God. Those are stored up for us. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So what are those things? If you look at the previous verses there, you will see what those things are. And he tells us, you know, not to lay up our treasures upon earth where moth and rock does corrupt and where thieves break down and steal. He says, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rock does corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. But then he goes on a little bit further. He says, you know, you can't serve two masters. He says, you can't serve two masters. But then he goes in verse 28 and says, Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. He says, they're not concerned about anything. They're out there in the field, they're not concerned. He says, and I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which to this day is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? You, O oh, you, a little faith. He says, I can provide for my people. I can take care of my people. If I can clothe nature, I can clothe my creation that I made in my image, in my likeness. He says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what, what all should we be clothed? He says, don't be concerned. Don't be solely concerned about that. Now, he's not saying be careless. But he said, don't make that your primary focus. Don't let that consume your thought process. Don't let that consume your mind. Well, what I'm going to wear? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? Don't let that be your main priority. But rest assured and be assured that the Father in heaven who made you is capable of taking care of you and taking care of your provisions. And he desires to provide for his children. For, all, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Here comes your confidence and assurance right now that he will take care of you. He says, I know what you need. After all, I'm the one that formed you. I'm the one that fashioned you. I know what's required to take care of you. And as Bishop used to say, he's never gone to court for non-support. He will take care of his children. I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No seed, begging bread. God will take care of his people. But he says, here is the thing. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and all these things shall be added unto you. Here's the prerequisite there. He will take care of you as his children if you seek first, if you make the kingdom of God your priority, if you make the word of God your priority, if you make seeking his face your priority, if you make spending time in his presence your priority, if you make communion with him your priority, if you make doing what his word says your priority, if you make living a life of holiness, as we were taught today in Sunday school, living a life of holiness, if you make that your priority, not thinking that it's unattainable, but that you can attain holiness because he's provided for you and he's made the way for you to be able to attain that. So take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow so to have thought of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. But he says, I want you to see. I want you to aim at. I want you to strive. I want you to pursue as your first priority my kingdom, the kingdom of God. And then he says, I'll provide for you. I will take care of you. So being in the right place at the right time, first point, you will receive provisions. Amen. Being in the right place at the right time, provisions. Point number one. And we see those provisions laid out throughout the Bible. Being in the right place at the right time will also afford you with Victory over the enemy. And I love what the Lord says in Exodus 23, 22. You don't have to turn it, but for those taking notes, you can make a note of that. Because it again deals with hearken. He says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice. That's what the hearken means, to obey. Obey his voice and do all that I speak. Then I will be an enemy unto thy enemies and an adversary unto thy adversaries. The Lord says, whoever comes against you and be in, is your enemy... I'll be their enemy. Whoever's for you, I'll be for them. Whoever blesses you, I'll bless them. Whoever curses you, I'll curse them. Look for the awesome God we serve. He says, if they're against you, then I'm against them. But if they're for you, then I'm for them. Look at the favor of God. Look at the graces that he has afforded to those that belong to him. So point number one, being in the right place at the right time, you'll get provisions. Point number two, you'll get victory over the enemies. And we find that throughout verses six through eight, that he shows us the victory that can be gained. Verse seven reads, the Lord, again, capital L-O-R-D, means the covenant keeping God. The Lord that keeps covenant. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They should come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command a bliss upon thee in the storehouses, and in all thy set thy hand unto, unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Point number two. Being in the right place at the right time, victory over the enemies. Over your enemies. I love what Psalm says, and you don't have to turn there, but you can make a note of that. I'm going to read it in your hearing. I love what Psalm 23 says. And Psalm 23 and 6 declares the following, and this is a wonderful promise, surely. I'm going to stop right there for a minute because that word surely will mess you up. Surely, that is definitive, that is definitely. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I don't know about you this morning, saints of God, but I can show you some goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I can use goodness and mercy following me. But he declares, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Not only will he give you victory over your enemies, but he's going to allow us to dwell in his house forever. And now that's a wonderful promise right there. Not only am I going to have victory, which is point number two, being in the right place at the right time, victory over my enemies, but I also have a dwelling place that he's going to give me. Psalm 91 declares that as well. Psalm 91 it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. So he has prepared a place for us that only we can go to. The enemy can't come to that secret place. 
The enemy cannot take you from that secret place. Amen. It's like being on the threshing floor. He's not allowed to come there. That secret place. Take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you and you can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. That's that place of safety, that place of refuge, that place of provision, that place of peace, that place of rest. And ye shall find rest for your souls in that secret place. So take me to that place, Lord. But we must hearken to the voice of the Lord. It's so important that we hearken to the voice of the Lord because it says that in Romans 10, 17, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Again, here, to perceive and comprehend by the means of the ear. Listen with the intent to obey. So, being in the right place at the right time, point number one, you shall receive provisions. Point number two, victory over the enemy. And point number three, presence. So now we look at provisions, victory, and now we're going to look at presence. And we can find it all throughout verses 9 through 12 in Deuteronomy 28. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. I'm going to stop it just for a moment. I love this promise here, a wonderful, precious promise that he has here in his word for us. He says that he's going to establish you. He's going to set you up for blessing. And then people are going to know that you belong to him. Because he set you up. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be set up for a blessing? Isn't it wonderful to be set up that he knows you belong to him. And that others can see too that you belong to him. Isn't it wonderful when he sets you up and he displays you. As one of his prized possessions. They are my people. They are holy unto me. I made them for myself. I am the one that's establishing them. And all the people going to know you belong to him. All the people of the earth, they're going to see when you drive up that you are blessed of the Lord. All the people, when you arrive on the scene, will know because you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the soul of the earth. And all the people shall know that you have the name of the Lord. All the people shall know that you belong to Christ. All the people shall know that he is on your side. All the people shall know that he is for you. All the people shall know that he is the one that delivered you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. All the people shall know that you have called upon the name of the Lord and that you walk in the favor of God and the blessings of God and that the hand of the Lord is upon you and the hand of the Lord is with you as well. All the people shall know they will be able to visibly see that the Lord is doing something in your life. They'll be able to see it. We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith, but they need to be able to see the hand of the Lord upon us. And he's going to allow that hand to be seen upon you. And I love, you don't have to turn there, but 1 Peter 2 and 9 also declares that you are a royal priesthood. That's what he called you, royalty. Here we go, we look at things on TV, we look at the princes and the kings and the queens of the earth, but none of them can compare to what he has done in our lives. Hallelujah. See, some of them were born into royalty. Hallelujah. We were made by the awesome, almighty God to be royalty. Amen. You know, it's amazing that even though we're down here on earth, on this earthly place, that we're seated with him in heavenly places. Isn't that awesome? What other people can say that they're down here on earth, but they're seated, seated with him in heavenly places? Amen. Glory to God. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, Lord. So now Hebrews, first, uh, I'm sorry, not Hebrews, first Peter, two and nine declares, but ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Now just meditate on it just for a moment. You're chosen. God chose you. He hand-picked and selected you. Amen. So 1 Peter 2.9 But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, 
a holy nation, a peculiar people. That means you've been purchased. Amen. Thank God for purchasing you. Amen. He, you know, he redeemed you back. He purchased you back. He brought you back. He became your kinsman redeemer when you could not redeem yourself and I could not redeem myself. He paid the price for all our sins and transgressions. The spotless lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Being in the right place at the right time, point one, provisions. Point two, victory over your enemies. And then point three, presence. So provisions, victory, presence. And we can find that presence all back over here in Deuteronomy. Now I read a couple verses in Deuteronomy, but I also want to read verse 12 for you. This is awesome. I love his promises. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. Now just think about that for a moment. His good treasures. Good treasures. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto you, unto thee, his good treasures, the heavens to give rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the works of thy hand. Mm. I believe that's what they call a Selah moment. Meditate on this. To bless all the work of, you, of thy hand. Now I'm going to speak for myself this morning personally. Lord, I would love for you to bless all the work of my hand. You mean everything that I, I put my hands to, he can cause to prosper. Everything I put my hands to, he can bless it. He can encourage me. He can cause me to be highly favored. He can cause me to be in power. He can say congratulations. He can ascribe worth to the works of my hands. Thank you, Lord. To bless all the work of thy hands, and I shall lean unto many nations, and I shall not borrow. Borrow. And the Lord shall make thee. Now look who's making you. You're not making yourself. No man is making you. But the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. beneath. If thou shalt hearken unto thy commandments, unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Hearken to the voice of the Lord. And he's going to make you the head and not the tail. He's going to cause you to prosper. He's going to rise you to a place of honor. No matter what means you came from or how you was born or what side of the track you were born in, he's going to raise you up to a place of honor because he's going to make you a royal priesthood a chosen people and he's going to make you a head and not the tail, above and not beneath. He's going to rise you up to a place of honor in his presence. He's going to take you there. And take a look at the board just here for a moment. And this is also going to prove the point as well. He says to observe the do. We read that earlier in verse 1. You know, we were to hearken diligently and observe to do. Wonderful point right here. But if you have the word of God in your heart, but fail to do the word, you will never please God. Observe to do. We must do the word. So here's our test of obedience. We know what the prerequisite is. We are to hearken diligently, observe to do. So here's the test of obedience. Are we listening with an intent to obey and are we applying the word to our life? Is there, a, is there a life application of what we have heard? Because again, if we have the word of God in our heart, but we fail to do the word, we will never please God. So let's turn uh, to James 4.17 and take a look at it just for a moment. Because he said, observe to do. And as you turn, I'm just going to remind you what he said in, James, uh, in Deuteronomy 28.1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So he said what? Observe to do. 
He said to observe to do. And now we take a look at James, and James brings the point home very, very well. He brings it home very well, Brother James. And he says, you know, you have to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. And he said that over in James 1.22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Now James 14 and 17 declares, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So we will be accountable for all the word that we have heard that we did not apply to our lives. All the, the truth of the word of God that we heard but we didn't do anything with. We'll have to give an account of what we did or what we heard. Observe to do. That's what he said. You have to observe to do it. Because when we don't, he says, when we know to do good and we don't do good, to us it's sin. See, it's one thing when you were ignorant. But once you get knowledge and wisdom and understanding, then we have to act upon that word that we heard. Being in the right place at the right time was the prerequisite. Hearken diligently, observe to do. What's the test? Am I a doer of the word? Am I listening with the intent to obey? Being in the right place at the right time, what can I expect to receive? Point one, provisions. Point two, victory over your enemies. Point three, presence. So provision, victory, and presence when you're in the right place at the right time.